Okay, the user agent header. So the user agent header describes the client's user agent. Your user agent endpoint must read the user agent header and return it in your response body. Here's an example of a user agent request. Okay, so we're going to slash user agent. So this is, this is where hopefully we start to get to see um, benefits from us doing all of our sort of like setup like this, right? So uh, if we, I think I just need to touch source, let's actually do this on the left. So on a touch source, oh, I'm already in source. Um, touch routes, user agent address. We'll do that again. There. Uh, you're still listening over there. Excellent. So let's head over to user agent and let's see. Let's see if this everything just sort of works the way we expect it to, which will be really nice. So we have a pub function user agent. Now, what do we need to come in here? We need the headers. We need the headers. So uh, let's do a result. This is going to be a response. I'm going to throw in a to do in you. So we know we're going to have a sum. Uh, where are you going to send this to? User desk agent. So user. So we've got that. We want to go to user agent. That's going to be fine. Context. This is um, running user agent uh, handler. Okay. All of that is fine and great now, but I need to get the headers uh, as part of the response, which is fine. Uh, now, can I, I can't, so I have owner, I have ownership of the response here. Sorry, that's the response. I have ownership of the request. I can pass in a reference to the request and that should be fine. So if we take in the request here, you're going to be happy there, but that means that in the request, so in process request, request equals parse raw request, we need to grab the headers out of here and then stuff them in into here. Now, what did I do? Parse method from request. So we have in the raw request, I get the reader, right? So I create a reader off of the request of bytes. Okay, parse method from request. We get our, okay, right, right. So we have method, we have path. Oh, you know what? We can probably just see when I send the request, can I see exactly what I'm sending? This won't show me, will it? This only just shows me what I get back. Hmm, okay. So if I want, to see exactly what we have. Oh, and actually here they have that. Here's an example of the user agent. So we have the method, the path, the protocol. And so we have method, path. I'm ignoring the protocol because we all know that's always HP 101, but then headers comes after that. So I need, so it, Probably would be good for me to have a protocol. That could be a string. And then headers probably should be a vector of this. That's my guess. And then I can deal with that separately. Now, that, should that actually be the case? Because I could also make this a... Okay, well, let's do one thing. One thing at a time here. Uh, protocol. So I want to grab you. So HTTP 1.1, so that's going to be, we know how long that is too, don't we? So parse path from request. Let's do another one here. Function parse uh, protocol. So we request, that's our reader. I want you to be a string. Okay, so you have our path bytes. So I want this to be let mute I mean, protocol bytes. So we're going to take our request. We're gonna read until, so read until, now in that case I did a space. I want to read until a new line. So this is an, a CRLF after each one of these too, I think. So we have two CRLFs here. Should I look for both of these? I mean, maybe, 
Because the request body comes after this. <sighs> Should I just get this one? Okay, so read until um, R N as bytes. And then we have our buffer that we're reading into, which is mute protocol bytes. So we are reading uh, reading protocol bytes. Okay, so it gives us you. What are you upset about? Mismatch types expected U8 found a reference. Oh, wait, right. wasn't there a better way? Um, it was read into, oh, it's just like a single byte, isn't it? Because that's one, that's not, those are two characters, aren't they? So I probably want to read until like that. Oh, and then turn this into bytes like that. So read until the new line like this. And then I want to move forward one more, which is the N. So if I could do request, is there something that just lets me, oh, read all bytes until a new line. Read line might be good. Oh, I like this a lot more. Read all bytes until a new line is reached and append. Okay. What does, append them to the provided string buffer. Previous content of the buffer will be preserved. To avoid appending to the buffer, you need to clear up first. Up to and including the delimiter I found will be appended to buffer. Okay, and then I could then I can trim it. Okay, I like that a lot more. So let's do instead of read until we'll do read line. Buffer like that, context. You need to be a string. Okay. And then we're gonna return an okay. So this is the protocol. So protocol and let's trim you. Expect a string. Oh, trim um two on. Read line only checks, oh, for new line? Oh, that's too bad. Oh, okay, that's, uh, okay. I was hoping that it would check everything, that it would like do the, the CRLF. I will get both, but will trim do the R properly? I don't know, we'll find out, right? Okay, so, I mean, let's, let's try this. The, the concern is that it might get a little bit weird with the CRLF, the full CRLF. CRLF. Okay, so if I parse protocol from the request, so then that gives us that, then let's do let protocol equals parse protocol from the request. We give it the reader context parsing protocol from request. Um, okay, and then we have the protocol field. It's happy in there. Let's then print line protocols protocol. Okay, so we should now see the protocol uh, thrown into here. So let's say I do this again. Protocol HTTP 1.1, and so far everything else looks appropriate. So I think, well, the real one is gonna be the next one, right? Because if if we did this correct, we're we're fine. It is. R C R it's R N, but it's two bytes. So we just want to skip two bytes now. So if I want to skip two bytes, I want to do, is there like a skip? There is no skip. Is there? I mean, it might be fine here because they're probably not deliberately crafting inputs that have slash N somewhere in the middle or protocol line, but an actual HTTP server wouldn't want to use read line. Oh, oh, if it implements seek. Okay. Yeah, and you're right. Yeah, like th there's there's a lot in this server that are not like great for for like a real a real life use case server, and I think that's perfectly fine because that's a completely different challenge altogether that we're not really getting into. You okay? So this I do a request reader here, which doesn't give me seek abilities. I don't think. So I kind of want to just skip the new line, right? So what if I, what if I just have another function, skip, crlf? I mean, I could do a result, but I don't actually know if I need to do results at all. I think that'll just be fine. Can I do read exact too? Let's find out. Ooh, yes, there it is. Read exact. Read the exact number of bytes required to fill the buffer. Okay, so it still needs to fill the buffer. I was hoping to like not have a buffer to fill because I don't care about like, I don't also think I can do something like this because this would, it's, it's going to yell at me. 
saying like, hey, why why are you doing this? Yeah, okay, so let's let's do R2. So like um function skip CRLF. So we have a request. I want to create our buffer, which is gonna be a I these are cares. So can I just say care two? Oh, and there's read byte that I can call twice too. That that can work. Can I do read exact two? No, because it reads exact into a buffer. See here, we could do request. So read exact, as we can see here, reads into a buffer. And so I would do this buffer is size two. And so it read exacts into the buffer like that. So context, uh, reading, um, reading to reading buffer buffer length bytes something like that uh, and it doesn't like this expect a built-in value expected value right so i mean if i do zeros i guess that's fine but as supercuber also mentions the other thing that we can do oh just pass mute zero two oh could i do that could i say Oh yeah, that works. I was expecting the um, borrow checker to yell at me for that one. So this works. And then the other one is that I could um, read a byte twice, but this one lets me do it all in one line instead of two lines. So I, li I like this more just because of that. Okay, so skip CRLF. Now we can do this right here. Skip CRLF. Let's do the mute reader here. So it's a uh, new line like that. Okay. So now that has skipped you. Sorry, that has skipped you now. So now it's it's headers time. So let's parse headers from request. We'll get our request result. And then we need some kind of headers. Technically that function is just skip two bytes. There's no check about it being a CRLF. Yeah, true. Um, I probably want headers to be a a hash map but can i do something like this um pub type headers is going to be a hash map of my guess is string string that's my guess we're going to find out if we're correct or not so headers like you so then we'll start with a let mute headers equals a hash map new and then we're going to return an okay headers so that's going to make you okay to begin with and that's going to be fine so the first thing we want to do is we want to read until we hit the the new line so probably do another read line do something like that so and then we want to do this until we reach this because each one ends with a new line so I want to read line. So we probably want to do a loop. So we'll do a loop here. We'll get a raw header, read the line into a buffer. So that means let mute header bytes. Okay, so that gives us you, what are you upset about? Right, I keep on forgetting this is a string. Okay, so we have our header. Um, we'll just call this header buffer. That'll work. Okay, so we have our header buffer. We get, I actually don't care about this raw header like that. In fact, we can even call this, oops, I did that wrong. So where we have buffer, we just call this the raw header. Okay, so now that we have the raw header, I want to, so that's gonna be this right here. Um, I kinda wanna split on the first, the first colon because we can have multiple colons in here, which is, that's fun. Or uh, technically we have, we can have spaces anywhere else too. I could split on colon space and just hope that that's not a thing that happens elsewhere in the header, which again, I might be able to get away with it in this specific challenge, but this is not something you'd ever want to do in a real life. Uh, Fennel, hello. How are you doing today? Uh, will it help in your resume? It could help in your resume. So. If you were able ever uh, to do some like project like this, 
I would also recommend adding some like flair for yourself and probably want to be able to like explain everything inside of the code and like what it's doing and why it's doing in order to like really add it to your resume. Otherwise, people might think that you just sort of followed a tutorial and just sort of went from that. So some something to keep in mind. So like, yeah, the, the answer is maybe. I think some of the other projects would be better resume fodder though, because like build your own HTTP server, there are plenty of people who have done something like that before. Uh, that being said, there are like build your own Git, build your own Redis. Those ones might be better, uh, might be better for, for resumes. And build your own interpreter is free right now during beta, but I think they only, oh, they have a decent number of languages. Go, Python, Rust, Kotlin, Gleam, Ocaml, and Zig. So those might be those might be good ones to do right now because it's free. Can I see in here what the request is gonna look like? Because I can see the headers, but I don't see. Yeah, this is the response of what I get back. I don't see the raw one here. Now that being said, Rapid API does give me that. So if I were what uh what's our Let's do a new request. So get to you. And so user agent, in this case, it's, uh, oh, rapid API isn't gonna set up. But yeah, in this case, it is gonna send a colon in here. But of course I could, if I were to do this with curl, I would potentially malform that and can send it without, I actually have no idea. If I sent this without in curl, would that we should test it. we should test that let's let's try it out what's the worst that could happen here so i get this raw header string and i want to okay if the raw header string is empty because there's nothing in here then okay so then that's that's our break time so if raw header is empty we are breaking otherwise we are what are we going to do we, I want to probably just print these out. Let's print line the raw header. And then we're turning nothing right now, but that's perfectly fine. Okay, so then in, we skip this year off, and then we're gonna do let headers, parse headers, mute reader. Okay, so we're not gonna do anything with this, and that's gonna be fine. And so we should see, we'll start with insomnia, kind of behind you, that's, not great here. Perfect. Okay. So if I come back to here, we see raw header H O I'm missing H O is that because I don't need this skip CRLF? Yeah. I didn't need that skip CRLF. Okay. So raw header is host. Uh, and then also just to make sure that we really are seeing what we expect to see. Um, when I print line, I want to put quotes around the raw header. So we can make sure there's no weird spaces or anything else like that. Okay, so host, uh, we have the new line at the end here, but we can trim that and that'll be fine. We can trim that. So trim new, we do that. If it's empty, break. And we are actually breaking here, right? Maybe, can I do this twice? I can, okay. So it, it didn't just sit there in an infinite loop forever which is great. So that worked out. I want to, I want to trim you after we get this in. So request that, um, let's see, Dim's, uh, Dim's elope. Hello. How are you doing today? Does anybody by any chance know any, uh, IEC 6, a uh, wonderful client library for Node.js? I don't know that. I'm sorry. Um, and we're doing a lot of rust in here right now. So I don't know if anybody in chat knows that either. So sorry about that. I'm sort of like out of out of um, practice for a lot of Node.js libraries. It's been it's been too long since I was like programming every day at Node.js. Like if you had caught me years ago, I probably would have. I ask you to check my comment under your latest video. I'm having a lot of trouble with testing in Rust after the live. Um, Toto, yeah, absolutely. We I I should I usually get a notification, but I've noticed something. Uh, Every once in a while, I don't get notifications for comments on videos, and I don't know why. So let me just double check really quickly that I got it, and I can see it in the studio. 
the latest comment that I see is on the Digital Ocean one. And that was three days ago. So I is it being held? Which video was it? Yeah, let me know what vid which which video it was. And then um the other one is uh Toto, it, it might also be a good idea to join the Discord. Let me put a, a link to that here. Wrong keyboard. Um if you join the Discord, that's usually easier to get an uh, uh, a hold of me than just um, uh, videos like that. Okay, let me take a look at that. Okay, is learning a code still worth it one? Huh, yeah, I haven't seen anything. The most recent comment that I see is three days ago. But it's also weird because I see a four comments total and only three comments on it. Weird. It's not held for review by YouTube. So this is something that happens all the time by, by YouTube. And I have no idea what it is. I've heard some other content creators complaining about it too. YouTube just sometimes drops comments. Like, especially if you put like anything that YouTube thinks is bad or a link in there, it might just shadow delete the comment. And it shows that the comment was there, but I can't see it at all, which sucks. Like uh, sometimes I'll get a, um, sometimes I'll get a notification excuse me, a notification about it, but I won't actually be able to see it. So yeah, I don't know. Discord is probably the best place to put that in because Discord doesn't shadow delete all the stuff. Um, okay, and then the other thing was, oh yeah, Dim, uh, sorry for the random question you just asked because most of the implementations are already in C++. Yeah, and that's the thing is like, I don't know of, like, you're right. Most of them are implemented in other libraries or other languages already but I don't know that specific one. So sorry about that, but always, always okay to ask. Okay. So, um, reading the bytes, everything is good like this. Okay. So, oh, I wanted to trim it. I wanted to trim this. So if the header is empty like that, let's also, I'm just going to shadow the raw header and trim it. So we're going to say that a raw header Oh, but that gives me a stir, a stir like that. That's not, okay, fine. I'll just trim like this. Okay, so back to you. If we hit ascend, we now see, okay, everything is on one line. We see the quotes around the things. That's great. We do have one raw header. Oh, that's an empty stirring here. Doesn't, I thought break immediately removed us. Oh, wait, I'd probably want to. Oh, because it's it's not empty. It has one character in it, which is the new line, isn't it? Or like the the R. It's the R. So I probably do want to do something like let raw header. Let's just call this header, right? So header equals the raw header trim like that. And then if header is empty, we'll do that. Let's go back to you. Much better. Okay, now we don't have that empty one showing up. That's good. Trim that string. Yeah, exactly. And toggle it. Hello. How are you doing today? Uh, okay, so I want to... Uh, how do I want to do this to break these up into their own things? You're doing well? Uh, excellent. That's good to hear. Hopefully, uh, Anathema hasn't been driving you too crazy recently. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. We're making decent progress on the HTTP server which is always nice. Now, if I wanted to break this up into left of the colon and right of the colon, that's the next thing. You were, you were a loon before you started, so basically it didn't hurt you any more than you were already hurt, right? Is that, is that, is that what I'm hearing? Is that correct? Okay, so how, how silly would this be for me to just do colon space to split on? That feel, oh, you know what? We wanna do one more test. Uh, let's do, this is a test. I want to curl uh, to, let's see, it's dash H, is it capital H for header? Um, and we'll do just something like, actually, does it add a headers in it already? Let's try this. Okay, so it adds those headers in automatically. And if I do a curl, I think I can just do lowercase, right? So I can say something like blah, blah. Nope, that wasn't it. Capital H, that's what it is. Okay, and then if I wanted to remove 
this space in here. Yeah, okay, so I could be e like that won't work. The problem is this colon right here is kind of stupid and horrible. So if I split on that, that means everything is no longer on the on the right thing. Embrace the madness. That sounds that sounds a appropriate for us. So we have a choice here. We I can continue with the entire assumption that uh this is not a production ready HTTP server, which kind of what we've been doing the entire time, and say, you know what? That's not that's not valid. Never you you're not allowed to do a uh, a space. You're not allowed to remove the space. It has to have the space here, otherwise everything breaks. Otherwise, I would need to look for the first space. Is there is there a split? Can I split after the first instance of something? Is that a thing? So like we have we have our header here, but can I do um for uh header I guess like for header part for header part and raw header so split off is at an index restricted to returning at most n items so separated by the pattern restricted to returning so i want two items and pattern would be colon like that yeah so split n okay so then i don't actually want a for loop for this i want let header parts so i want something like that that now i can do next and next on the two of them and get what i expect to get out of it right so i could then do headers insert uh the key is um let's do header name header name is going to be header parts next it's an option uh let's map the option, and I want to trim, I want to trim and to own this. So I want, wait, that's not how it works. Uh, header, I'm gonna trim to own that. That gives me a string. You're still unknown. Okay, now you're a string. Then I can do let header value, header parts, next. I'm gonna map header trim. To owned. Okay, so we have two option strings. I don't want to store this with option strings, so I need to continue if either of these are options. So if if header name or header value, so is none. No, not that. Is none. Do what I do what I mean, not what I type. Uh, okay, so if header name is none or header value is none, then I want to continue. And that's that's it. Okay, so at this point here, we can now insert an unwrapped header name and a header value. You need to be mutable. Okay, so then uh, we have the raw header printed out. So now I can do uh, headers. And actually, I don't need to do that at all. We have headers, insert, we break out of you. I want to now just print out headers, headers. Um, you need to be debug, and then that's going to be fine. Okay, let's see if this works. So if I send you headers, we have accept, star, star, user agent, insomnia, host, localhost perfect and if i were to do this thing again user agent curl blah blah okay so everything works the way we expect it to and we're doing it at least like slightly better than we were before so happy with that we need to go to request and say pub headers is headers so parse raw request and all these headers so now we have the headers perfect which means we can go back to the user agent. Uh, we have the headers inside of here now. What are we supposed to do with them? <laughs> We're supposed to put the user agent, return it in your response body. And that should just be whatever they put in here. Okay, which is just check text and plain. Easy, okay. So um, 
we need let the user agent is going to be it's going to be a sum isn't it i mean it should always be here and we can just throw an error because you know why not but okay so user agent um equals let's do request headers let's get um it's going to be a user agent uh i could also throw this you know what we we should do this because like they we're not supposed to care about capitalizations but we totally are right now and i can easily fix this right because we can say for this header i am getting so i'm trimming to owned and i can just say uh for the name to lowercase here and that's going to be fine so here instead of user agent like that that becomes user agent user agent that gets us an option like that so this gives me the value this just gets the value right returns a reference to the value corresponding to the key perfect so then uh if some if let some user agents equals that and i can even get rid of this let some so this becomes an else here okay so if we don't have this what do i want to do i probably want to just return a response let's just bail because why not uh bail missing user agent header so then at this point we can now build a response so code is going to be an http code okay uh, and for the body we're going to do a sum user agent i mean considering that this already is a string oh this is going to be so much easier okay hold on let's just grab the user agent out don't need this else we're now going to have a okay response code is okay and the body is just going to be uh, i do need to map you to two owned that gives me a string and then body becomes user agent like that what are you upset about you're upset of the fact the fact that i didn't oh weird okay. okay so you're happy here no errors so we need routes mod and okay so we have user agent like that actually is this just going to work let's find out so if we now go to user agent in some okay i think this is just going to work as as we needed so let's go ahead and take care of some of these um we aren't using a skip crlf so i'm just going to remove it okay method and protocol are never read from here those are fine don't worry oh but you know what in the response instead of this i can just grab this off of response oh wait do i not have the oh i need the request in here in send response we would need the request in order for me to get this okay so never mind um unused bail that's fine yeah those other two things oh wait uh for this request can't i just say right here allow unused what is this unused oh dead code okay protocol I mean, I actually don't know if we're ever going to use protocol, but okay, we have one warning and that's fine. Okay, so this is, uh, we added a uh, user agent mirror route and let's see if this works. And it did, and I don't think we need to clean up anything either. So that's perfect. So uh, read header is done.